This is Reverend Kirk Lawton, minister at Ocean Lakes Family Campground, and this is our podcast. Our prayer is that this message may enrich your life as you find God especially meaningful to you. Thank you for worshiping with us. You perhaps have heard the expression, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Nero was the emperor in 64 AD when the city of Rome did burn. And Nero was the one who was responsible for it. He had built the city, or he had had the city burned in order to build greater and more magnificent buildings to honor himself. Of course, the people suspected Nero of having done this, and thus the expression Nero fiddled while Rome burned. And so in an attempt to prevent suspicion from coming in his direction, Nero falsely accused the Christians of being responsible for the burning of the city, and he ordered their punishment. Nero's persecution of Christians was quite severe in and around Rome, although it was not general over the entire empire. However, the example Nero set in persecution in Rome encouraged enemies of Christians in other places to take advantage of even the slightest reason to persecute them. It was during this time of intense persecution that Peter wrote a letter to the Christians who were actually being so cruelly mistreated. Actually, this letter was written only a short time before Peter's own death. And in this letter, Peter tries to encourage the Christians who were undergoing such hard times. In the midst of Peter's words, we have a statement which has given so much comfort down through the years since it was written. The words are found in 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Weymouth's translation puts it this way, throw the whole of your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. The contemporary English version states it this way, God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to him. If you go back and read the first part of that verse, you will see that this prescription begins with a directive. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And then it says, Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. This supposes that we have first placed our faith in God through Jesus Christ. This is not a promise that is casually thrown out for just everybody, even those who shun God and his will in their lives. But when we have truly humbled ourselves under God's mighty hand, then how do we go about practicing having this kind of faith in him? How can this faith be real to us when we are tortured by fear thought instead of being girded by forethought? This morning I wanted to give three simple practical ways in which I believe this can be done. First, limit your load of worries. You notice I did not say get rid of all your worries. There are some situations in which a bit of anxiety may stand us in good stead. Anxiety has been defined as painful uneasiness of mind over an impending or anticipated ill. Yes, there are times when a bit of care may be most beneficial. For example, when a parent is just before finding out some wrong that a child has done. Or when a Bible teacher is uneasy just before leading a group in Bible study. Or when a preacher is about to stand before a congregation to bring a message. I once asked my father, who at that time had been preaching for many years, I said, Dad, how long will it take before I can expect to get rid of the butterflies in the stomach before getting up to preach? My dad's reply was not very encouraging to a young preacher, son. He said, Son, I'll let you know when that ever happens. Some of the worries that we face have to do with the immediate immediate future over which we have some control. But some of our worries relate to the unforeseeable future, and the future belongs to God. Some of our anxieties fester around past events, and also these are in God's hands, we know. We've already confessed those faults and failures to Him. Hasn't God already forgiven us of what we have confessed to Him? 
The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has re he removed our transgressions from us. Let me ask you, have you ever gone to the mountains and looked as far as you can see in one direction and then turn around and look the opposite way? How, how long is that? Or have you ever gone down to the ocean and looked out just as far as you can see on the horizon? Maybe a ship that looks like a little speck. And then you turn and look behind you, perhaps at some distant clouds. I read some time ago that the, the farthest the human eye can see out over the ocean is only a few miles. But the Bible says that God removes our sins that we confess to him as far as the east is from the west. This means that there's no limit to what God can and will do for us if we let him. Yes, many of our worries, anxieties that crowd in on us can be eliminated if we just learn to limit our load of worries. I think I may have shared with you uh, sometime in the past what somebody wrote uh, entitled, Why Worry? There are only two things to worry about. Either you're well or you're sick. If you're well, then there's nothing to worry about. But if you're sick, there are two things to worry about. Either you're going to get well or you're going to die. If you get well, then <laughs> there's nothing to worry about. But if you die, there are two things to worry about. Either you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Now, if you go to heaven, then there's nothing to worry about. But if you go to hell, you're going to be so busy shaking hands with old friends, you're not going to have time to worry. <laughs> Another observation, worry uh, can be relieved if we'll stagger the load. First, limit the load of worries and then stagger the load second. Break up the load so you can deal each day with each anxiety as a single enemy rather than as a whole battalion. Years ago in California, there was a very elderly man who began to cut trees to build a log house for himself. A friend who knew what he had planned to do once came to him as he was cutting down a tree and he said, Oh man, isn't this too large an undertaking for a person who's no longer young? The old fellow chuckled and said, yes, you're right. It would be if I looked beyond the chopping of the trees and sawing of the logs, if I pictured myself laying the foundation and erecting the walls and putting the roof on my house, carrying all that load at one time would absolutely exhaust me. He said, but you know, it isn't too much of a job for me just to cut down this one tree right here. And that's my only job at the present moment. But we so often try to get so busy doing everything at one time, we confuse ourselves and we really do not accomplish what we should. We become like the police chief in a small town who had been sent six pictures of a wanted man. The subject's photo had been taken in six different positions from the front, at angles, sideways. And a few days, the headquarters received from that chief the following notice. Sirs. I have received the pictures of the six men you want. Five of them have been captured, and now we're hot on the trail of the six. <laughs> there wasn't but one man. When we learn to stagger our burden, we become better able to deal with each day's trouble, one day at a time. This helps us to dispel the unholy trinity of worry, flurry, and hurry. If your life is too long, too hard, break it up. Break it apart into minutes, hours, seconds. Someone has said a single moment is always manageable, no matter what burden it brings. And each night, God sends a sunset to shut us away from tomorrow's troubles. Finally, let me give one more suggestion, that is to share your load. This does not mean to unload it on another person who already may be weighed down with their own burdens. It does not mean spineless evasion of your own responsibility either. But we can share our load with another person who can help. God has people all around us, a trusted friend, a minister, but always we can unload our burden to God. The Bible says in everything, 
let your requests be made known to God. Anna Temple has written a beautiful little poem called The Kneeling Camel. The camel, at the close of day, kneels down upon the sandy plain to have his burden lifted off and rest again. My soul, thou too shouldst to thy knees when daylight draweth to a close, and let thy master lift the load and grant repose. Else how couldst thou tomorrow meet with all tomorrow's work to do, if thou thy burden all the night dost carry through? The camel kneels at break of day to have his guide replace his load, then rises up anew to take the desert road. So thou shouldst kneel at morning's dawn, that God may give thee daily care, assured that he no load too great will make thee bear. Yes, Peter had a real message to tell, didn't he? He had good news for those who were persecuted in his day, and this good news can be no less good news for us today. Our God is rich in mercy to all who call upon him, no matter what may be the problem we face. Maybe things about the answer to your present problem you do not know right now, but you can be sure that God cares about you so much, he's willing to help you. One of our hymns we sing, Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Oh God, help us to have the faith in you and the trust to know that whatever comes our way, we can cast our care upon you and know that you are right there to help us. Thank you for that supporting, life-giving truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.